Hello everyone, this is Samir from Audio Science Review. I had a member ask me if I wanted to test these dirt cheap uh, RCA cables. Uh, this is an aftermarket one from a company called Recoton uh, that they sold on uh, on the shelves in the old days when Radio Shack was around and different retailers were around. Uh, I found them on the eBay for two for four dollars, so about two dollars for each. Uh, it looks like one of these. Uh, we used to get a lot of these in, in thrown in audio equipment. Some companies still uh, do that today. Uh, they're very, very thin, not fashionable like the new ones that we have. And the uh, question is, how well do they perform? Are there any losses in a cable like this or not? So I thought I'd do a quick uh, assessment of that. Uh, by jumping right into the measurements. Um, for testing this time, I, I uh, put my audio precision analyzer in what is called a loopback mode, meaning there's a relay internally connects input to the output. So uh, it's the least lossy way of, of transmitting input to the output. I set the voltage to two volts, which is the nominal voltage we get on RCA cables. And uh, we see that the exceptional performance of this uh, audio analyzer in that the distortion is as low as almost 150 dB and this noise dominated to about 121 dB and that's 60 dB better than threshold of hearing. So uh, performance is just superb as you would expect from a $30,000 instrument. I then connected this cable to it intuitively. Like I said, you would think, oh, there's going to be some losses. Well, there isn't. The exact same volt, 2 volts and 1.99, which is what we got, 2 volts and 1.91. So there's no DC losses or straight losses. Uh, no distortions added. The you know spike is still down to minus 150. The noise is down in here. So absolutely no change. Some people complain and say that test is at one kilohertz. What if, you know, it's not music? Okay, well, I've got music in the form of uh, 32 tones um, that I can run that I usually put as part of a lot of my tests. Uh, we run that with the loopback mode of the audio precision analyzer. And basically this is the desired signal and everything down here in the form of what we call grass is noise and distortion. It's down about minus 130 dB, which is about 21 to 22 bits. So extremely good uh, distortion-free range. And when I plug in this three-foot cable, I get identical uh, performance. Indeed, in the measurement tool, I can overlay these two. And once I do that, the colors blend and you can't tell one from the other. Um, sometimes people complain that say that, well, you're not testing at higher frequencies, even though we don't hear them, what value they have, I don't know. But I do have a test that goes all the way up to 90 kilohertz, so four and a half times the audible uh, <clears throat> range. And then uh, I test from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so the analyzer generating step a set of frequencies um, starts from right and goes to the left in this test. So it goes from 20 kilohertz all the way down to 20 hertz. Again, whether I have the analyzer in its loopback mode or I have it on uh, uh, with this uh, cheap little cable, performance identical. About this time, somebody will complain that, oh, there's some happening in timing domain, the rise time matters, the slew rate matters. So I say, all right, I'll go ahead and create a test for that. And here I set up the measurement bandwidth to be one megahertz, so about 25 times the uh, audible band, and generate this one kilohertz uh, square wave and really zoomed in so it takes this entire display so we can see these little nuances in the value as it changes. And uh, this time I did overlay the two measurements, the loopback and, and uh, the Rakuten cable. And as you can see, the pixels land right on top of each other. There's zero difference in rise time, ringing, or any other effect. So every way we test this, this cable is going to perform exceptionally well. Um, now, if you took this cable and made it you know, 10 meters or 20, 30 feet, you are going to have problems because the shield impedance becomes uh, higher and there's more uh, voltage drop across it. And the higher that drop is, the more ground loops you can get. Um, and I haven't tested this one. It may be more uh, prone to picking up noise, although I'll tell you, in this such a short length, it's not going to have anything else close to it that generates enough of a magnetic or, uh, or uh, 
our field to induce on this thing to matter uh, but again you have a long cable it may make a difference so the point isn't that this is the cable you want to go buy you know but if you have it and this is what you, need, you know sitting around don't feel bad about using it i use this uh amazon basics cable which i think i bought for ten dollars i've reviewed it on on the forum you can see its performance also just as good as this one it's six foot long it's thick and nice and flexible and i've abused this to death in that I plugged and unplugged it a thousand times. Eventually, one of the outer shells got a little loose, so I just squeezed it with a plier and it's tight again. It's gold plated and uh, feels really great. So ten dollars. So the point isn't that you know. Again, you need to go buy. You should go buy these things. But if you have them, use them. Uh, if anybody really kills you. Uh, point it to my review and say hey look it makes no difference at all performance is still superb uh given the, you know the actual bandwidth and capability of this cable is far above audio band that's why it doesn't make a difference when we make it so cheap and thick okay i'm trying to keep this video short so i can do more of these quickie reviews hopefully you got something out of it see you in a future one Bye bye